Cutting Edge is finally here. It's a brand new Warbond, the first introduced into the game post-release, and I am very excited to check it out. There were a lot of leaks leading up to the release of this Warbond, so what is actually real and what is fiction? We are about to find out. I figure a lot of you guys are either stuck at work or school, so we're gonna dive in, take a look at all of the major items, and break it all down. So first things first, Cutting Edge is gonna cost you 1,000 super credits. Hopefully you've been doing your missions, grinding it out, and you don't have to buy anything. But if you do, of course you can go over to the super credit store and buy 1,000 straight for 10 bucks. So the Battle Pass, the War Bond, does cost equivalent of 10 US dollars. I already bought the pack, I had enough super credits, and as you can see, I have been saving up on my medals. I've got 250 banked, which is the cap, which means I can jump right into the war bond and claim a few items. Cutting Edge features three full pages of items to unlock, and as you'll see, the cost to unlock each page is actually not that bad. With my 250 medals banked, I can get to the third page on day one, and after a couple more missions, I should be able to unlock a bunch of different items on this page. But we're gonna start on page one because that's where all the action begins, and we're gonna look at the LAS-16 Sickle. This is a brand new energy-based primary weapon. It's got 55 base damage, it's got a fire limit of nine, recoil of two, and a fire rate of 750. It's got light armor penetration, and of course it uses heat. I'm very excited to check this one out because I would love a primary energy-based weapon that actually works. The scythe doesn't really cut it. It's fine in some situations, but ultimately it falls short the LAS-16 Sickle, I'm hoping, does do some work on the battlefield. Next, we've got the Localization Confusion Booster, and this one perplexes me, guys, because I still don't understand the effect. Increases the time between enemy encounters. I don't know if this is influencing patrols, if this has anything to do with bot drops or bug breaches, but I'm definitely going to be checking this one out and trying to measure what the booster is actually doing for the team, right? Boosters impact the entire team, so hopefully, this does reduce the number of annoying encounters with enemies throughout missions. As many of you know, they changed the spawn rates in the recent patch.102. So if this helps alleviate some of the overwhelming little enemies that are part of those spawn changes, I think this would be a good booster to put on. All right, we've also got our first new set of armor, the EX-03 Prototype 3. Now you will see that all of the armor passive effects are exactly the same for all three sets of armor. It provides 95 resistance to arc damage. Now the EX-03 has an armor rating of 100, a speed of 500, and a stamina regen of 100. So from a passive bonus perspective, everything is leaning into arc damage reduction. Now obviously the arc thrower is currently rising to the top as a meta, but with the arc blitzer being introduced as a primary weapon in this pack, there's gonna be a lot more players using arc based weapons. So this might be armor you wanna consider for yourself and possibly even pushing your team to wear it as well. On this page, we have some other things like emotes. We've got the head tap emote. We've also got a new cape here, the Bot Slayer, which I actually really like. I love the tan and red vibe, and that matches, of course, the Bot Slayer player card. Sliding onto page two, we're gonna start with the SG-8P Punisher Plasma. This is a weapon that I have been very interested to check out because it is the first plasma-based weapon in the game. Now, all of the leaked footage shows that this shoots out kind of a blue blob of plasma, almost like a pseudo grenade launcher, not acting like a shotgun in any real way. But as you can see, it's got a damage rate of 100, it's got a capacity of eight, recoil of 110, and a fire rate of 80. It's also an explosive weapon. And as you remember from our previous videos, explosive damage does way more to weak spots and fleshy parts of enemies than say a standard weapon does. All right, moving on to the next armor set, the EX-16 Prototype 16. Again, that armor passive effect is exactly the same with electrical conduit, and the armor rating, speed, and stamina regen are exactly the same as the first set of armor. So really, this comes down to cosmetics, if you want the green set of armor or if you want the tan set of armor. Of course, there is also a helmet to match, so if you're into helmets and you're looking for a specific vibe, you have some options here. This is also where you can unlock the G23 stun grenade. Now, I don't know which players would be using a stun grenade over a damaging grenade, specifically when something like the impact or even the high explosive is very good, but if you're looking for a different option, more of a utility option, the G23 stun is now out there. Of course, on this page, we've also got some more super credits as well as a new player card, the Matrice Rex and the matching Matrice Rex cloak. I do really like this one as well. I think all three of the cloaks in this pack are actually pretty awesome. There is also a new emote, the shotgun show, which I think is actually pretty funny. Moving along to the final page, of course, we're gonna start with the Arc 12 Blitzer. 
which I am just very, very excited about. This is another new shotgun. It's got a damage rate of 250, an unlimited capacity because it is energy-based, very much like the Arc Thrower. It's got a recoil of 60 and a fire rate of 30. Now, what I'm most interested in is seeing if this thing stacks up against the Arc Thrower, how well it stacks up against the Arc Thrower, and if it is potentially just as viable as a primary weapon, because remember, the Arc Thrower is a support weapon. If we could use the Arc-12 Blitzer instead of the Arc Thrower, that would then free us up for something like an EAT or a Recoilless, so then we could deal with armor targets as well as having the stopping power of an energy-based shotgun. Also in the final tier is the LAS-7 Dagger. I am also very interested in this weapon because there are not enough secondary weapon offerings currently in the game. This could potentially change that. We've got 150 damage per second. We've got a fire limit of five. We've got a recoil of one. And of course, a slew of other bonuses down there. It's light armor penetrating. It's one handed. It is a beam weapon. And of course, it uses heat. If this thing is even remotely decent at killing enemies, I think this is going to be probably a staple in most people's kit. Like I said, the secondary weapons are not great and the restrictions on ammo are frustrating. So having a weapon that doesn't require ammo could be really good. Of course, you have to manage your heat, but ultimately, if this thing does even a modicum of decent damage, I think we're in business. Also in this tier is the EX00 Prototype X. Again, the passive effects are exactly the same, but we do have a difference in the armor rating, speed, and stamina regen. We've got less armor rating, higher speed, and slightly higher stamina regen, so a light armor set. There are a lot of benefits to using light armor, but of course there are some drawbacks now that armor mitigation finally works and enemies hit a little bit harder. So light armor may not be the right option for you, but there is an option in the cutting edge war bond. And also in this tier, of course, we've got a new player card, the Agent of Oblivion and the matching Agent of Oblivion cape. Like I said, really love all three capes in this pack. There is the matching helm to the EX00 Prototype X. Of course, we've got some super credits here. And then finally, the presentable emote. I think this one is pretty fun, mainly because it's actually a bit longer than some of the other ones, dusting off all that muck in the grime and, you know, showcasing yourself as a soldier of democracy. So there you have it, friends. Everything in the new Cutting Edge Warbond. Like I said, a thousand super credits and pretty easy to unlock the things that you want if you've been saving up on your medals. Of course, there is a brand new mission in the game that you can check out. You can do that. You can get some new medals. All of the orders are working now, so it shouldn't be hard to pick up enough medals to buy all of the items in this pack that you're looking for. Let me know what you think of Cutting Edge in the comments down below. Of course, hit that thumbs up if you like our Helldivers 2 videos. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching and play on.